five days to go, a tight race in the presidential election. It's been hard fought and, you know, it's been ugly at times. Yes, let's get into it. We've got Lilia Chacon, journalist and former Bernie Sanders spokesperson, and Dan Proft from The Answer on AM560. Welcome to the both Thank you. Lilia, Dan. Okay, so Dan, I have to ask you, okay, Trump's new momentum, because he has definitely gained some. Is it the result of Comey's letter? Or do you think it's just the natural tightening of the race this time of the year, right before the election? Um, I, think there's, I think there's a few factors, but there's no question that the Comey announcement on Friday was a seismic boom. I mean, it, it, it changed the nature of the race, and you see a couple of things happening. One, Republicans who are a little queasy about Trump are coming home. Okay. Two, he, uh, independents are breaking his way in battleground states. I, I'm not, I wouldn't go so far as to say Hillary's in free fall, but it's right there. It's close. Every battleground state is trending Trump. Okay. Mm. And this is all the Comey because of the emails and... and right, and, and that's I just the numbers. I I don't see a free fall on Hillary's part. I see a, uh, a poll that comes out today. She's 3% ahead. Yes, it might be within the margin of error, but she's still ahead. Yeah. Well. And I think also... A lot of people have been reluctant to declare for Trump because he has been such a divisive figure. And so it might be now that we're five days away, these people are actually declaring. But what I disagree is that any minds were actually changed. Well, you see, here's, here's what's, I mean, you can look at realclearpolitics.com, look at the averages. I mean, it's like, it's like arguing about math. The numbers are the numbers are the numbers. Uh, but here's what I think is happening. This is a contest between two people who are wildly unpopular. The two most unpopular major party nominees in the history of our country and it was who can make the election a referendum on the other a week ago it was a referendum on Trump and he was losing today and what I think is going to happen through Tuesday, it's a referendum on Hillary because of the Comey announcement. And she loses a referendum on her, just like he would lose a referendum on him. But she's in the crosshairs right now. Hmm. But don't you feel like these are the politics of distraction? And that we've absolved the candidates from having to talk about, how about the health care premiums? Right. How about the things that are really hitting people where they live? Well, that's not and helping Hillary either. Well, because she's still advocating for the Affordable Care Act, right. and and I was saying to Dan, my God, when I start agreeing with you, we are this country oh. is in disarray. <laughs> but um, I I do think that that needs a wholesale overhaul. But. Trump doesn't have a plan. Well, he, was, he said he's going to go in and repeal it right away. Exactly. If he's elected, he's going to go in right... That's like one of his first things he said he's going to do, and do it very fast and repeal and be done with That's, it. That is what he said, and House Republicans and Senate Republicans agree with him. And oh, by the way, Obamacare is still as unpopular today as it was when it was passed. And I don't know about you in Illinois, but you just saw Blue Cross Blue Shields preferred PPO 60% premium spike. People are feeling that. People are People getting the are letters in, their in the mail. I mean, that's real. Those are real numbers. Your Obamacare has constricted choice and increased costs, and a lot of people don't like it. No, and the providers are abandoning the effort. So we agree on health care. It needs a reform, but it can't just be abolished because the fact is millions of people have been able to get in insured. They have pre-existing conditions. And let's face it, we're all one diagnosis or bus crash away from bankruptcy right. due to medical bills. All right. Uh, speaking of President Obama, um, he made an unprecedented move by uh, asking male voters if sexism is preventing them from voting for Hillary. Take a look. When a guy's ambitious and out in the public arena and working hard, well, that's okay. But, but when a woman suddenly does it, suddenly you're all like, well, why is she doing that? I'm just being honest. I want you to think about it because she is so much better qualified than the other guy. Mm. Dan, what were your thoughts on that? <laughs> he's not being honest. He's being a demagogue. I mean, look, um, so all, 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 all you dudes out there, all you dudes out there who voted for Nikki Haley to be governor of South Carolina, Susanna Martinez to be the governor of New Mexico, um, uh, Senator Kelly Ayotte from New Hampshire. I mean, I could go on and Mary Phelan, the governor of Oklahoma. Uh, these are all Republican women who are elected to statewide office, federal office. Um, so what he's really trying to do is just kind of go to the isms and the phobias because, as I said... But isn't that the same thing that Trump does? He's playing on everybody's phobias? Well, well, it, it, I mean, that, that's what... Uh, Everybody has been saying that he's been doing his whole campaign. Well, if, if you're comparing Barack Obama to Donald Trump, then I'll concede your point. And both of them I find to be people of low character.
Really? Well, I disagree. I do find Hillary much more equipped. She's been to countries that Trump can't even pronounce. And I also And, and travel is not an accomplishment, as Carly well, Fiorina she says. She was on business. This woman knows the business. She's been a U.S. senator. She has experience. And I know this is an election year when outsiders, and I work for Bernie, I understand the appeal, but even he was a U.S. senator. Right, right. She, so, she, do you, she, real, real quick, because we do have to yeah, go, okay. do you like Donald Trump? No. Okay. No. Are, are you, are you going to vote for Donald Trump? I'm, I'm voting for him because it's the party, but the you don't like who. No, it's not because the party. It's because candidates are representatives. They're vehicles for policy choices. I know what I'm going to get from Hillary Clinton, which is what she's been doing for the last 30 years, and what Barack Obama has. But you like Donald eight. Trump's ideas better? I, I like what he, the people around him, have imputed onto his candidacy and what House and Senate Republicans would do with him as president. All right, all right. Both take your bias out. January 20th. Who is sworn in as our next president? I hope it's Hillary Clinton, and I think it will be a historic day. Dan? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's going to be Donald Trump. <laughs> and then we're All right, we got to take a break. <laughs> Up next, G is doing someone's job so they can skip work because they're probably too tired from celebrating the Cubs' victory. <laughs> we'll be right back.